So, as we are now a couple of days removed from the 2021 MLS regular season and about a week and a half before the postseason begin, I thought this would be a time for me to kind of do an annual video where we look at the most surprising and disappointing team this season in the, the regular season because there's no doubt that there were some teams that was a big surprise whether they overachieve or made it to the playoffs where nobody expected that they were going to do or the fact that we were kind of surprised of how good they they were with the way that you know we've we thought that they would be good but we didn't think that they were were the the best of the pack and there's no doubt now that we'll get to that team but we'll also get to some teams that unfortunately have clearly underachieved this season and it turns out to be probably a year where they want to forget and a and a year year that is full of disappointment but we begin with kind of the happier side which is talk about the most surprising team and at number one uh the most surprising team this season oh and by the way uh i forgot to mention that anytime when i do these kind of video i gotta remind you guys that this is actually not a ranking system so one through five when it means number one it, it's not mean that that is the most surprising team and likewise it's the other one where i talk about the most this supporting team number one is not that that case and of course i will mention three teams in the honorable mention but we start with number one in the the most surprising team this season and if this is a rankings there's no doubt that they would be number one and that of course is the colorado rapids so i mentioned many times before nobody saw this one coming with the way that they were finished at the top of the western conference in fact if you would have told me in the beginning of the season that they'll finish at the top of the western conference yeah, I think you're a bit of a nut, nut job, but here we are at the end of the regular season and this team finished in, in the top of the Western Conference and kind of defy all odds with the way that this is a team that doesn't have a lot of true star on their team, but it's a team that that believes in hard work and also have a very good head coach in the name of Robin Frazier, which I think, you know, I talked about before where, you know, his case of potentially winning coach of the year is definitely strong, though I think most likely he might not be able to win it because, you know, Bruce Arena, what he's done with New England, getting the supporters show and also getting the most points ever in MLS history is probably going to win it. But because of the fact that the Rapids now, now finished top of the Western Conference, yeah, now it gets even more difficult. I mean, it was already difficult before, but now it's even more difficult with the way that, again, I still think that as great as an achievement that Bruce Arena has done to that Revs team, that Revs team has a bunch of, of star players on, on that team, and also they spent a lot of money in terms of uh, building that squad. This team didn't even spend any money. Like, I mean, if they did, of course, spend some money, but not as much as a team that you would think that would finish at the top of the western conference so yeah that has to just shows you that sometimes money doesn't doesn't always mean that you you always are are or money isn't always ways something that you need really need in order to be be the be best of your conference and the rapids this season have definitely proved that that of course is the case now at number two and i'm gonna say it's gonna be nashville sc now what is surprising about nashville this season is that I thought this season they were going to maybe regress a little bit and maybe have that that sophomore slump. Yes, the first year, you know, I I definitely enjoyed the feel good story with Nashville making the playoffs as an expansion team, and obviously once they got into the playoffs, they also make some history of, of becoming only one of two expansion teams ever win a a playoff game. Well, actually, win multiple play, playoff game that is, and I really thought that that team had a big shot in terms of maybe even go go on an even deeper playoff run that they 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 fought but at the same time i thought maybe you know as good as a feel good story it is it seemed like this team might have a regression nope instead of a regression they just look much stronger and not only the fact that the defense which you know my big question for last season is that well as good as that defense was how is it going to 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 do throughout the entire 34 game season because it's it's one thing to have a very sturdy defense through a 23 game season like we had last season but it's a whole different ammo than than when we see a team that has to go through through that long of a season and still have a defensive record and at least this season nashville has proven that you you can't do it like this team has conceded i think one of the most fewest and probably the fewest goal so far by any team this season and not to mention the fact that you know one of the biggest accuse here for this team in their expansion year is that they couldn't score goals to get them them some some points and get them some wins this season they were able to 
to to do so and because of the fact that they their attack finally started to to jail and that they, there's been times where they look like a very fun t team to w watch you know that that is kind of the reason why nashville has really risen themselves up and really punched above above their their weight and didn't really have that that sophomore slump that we we thought that they have and in some way you could also say that just like colorado where i think throughout the season colorado was kind of flying under the air it's kind of the same with nashville i i, I feel like nashville is not get, get getting enough credit with the way that i guess maybe because they are a small mar market team you don't usually get as much cre credit as some of those big market and especially more of those those team that's more established in mls but i feel like it is definitely time to give nashville some credit and give credit to what gary smith has done to this team uh in in just two short short year in the league but now at number three now this might be a surprise itself that i included them in here but i'm actually going to include the supporter shield winner the new england revolution now it's not a surprise the fact that they were one of the best team in the league because we we knew that coming into the season this refs team have a lot of talent but my biggest question with this team always has been about their attack and whether or not you know last year well the biggest issue with this team is that they tend to have problems in terms of finishing well not only the fact that they did not had it, that problem this season it seems like they corrected but it turns out this team team was one if not not or not just one but it turns out the best team in the regular their season and yeah they absolutely just was on another planet compared to anybody else especially in the eastern conference where there's just no point this season where you see the refs look like a team that had had a slum and it's not very often you see in an entire mls season you see a team that go go doesn't really have a, a lot lot of uh, or if any any time the period where they look like they, they slow down so yeah you got to give a lot of credit of what bruce arena has done to this team and has in some way i feel feel like you know the expectation that they had i mean this year expectation was definitely high of them making the playoffs but i still feel like it's a bit of a surprise they even exceed that expectation of winning the supporter shield and also winning it for the first time in their club history and also getting the the the, the point the most points total because i thought you know when lefc reached that Mark back in 2019 i didn't think it was going to be broken that quickly but new england has been proven that that's not the case and you know it's been an incredible season that bruce arena has really done to this team in the regular season but now moving on to number four and yeah, number four you knew i had to include this team you knew i have to include the vancouver whitecaps in it because i don't think back in the halfway part of the season when this team was still playing at rio tinto stadium if you would have told me that this team would actually make it to the play playoffs at that point, you would think I am absolutely out of my mind. I mean, this team looked like it was, like, it felt like it, they were more like on this part of the bracket of being a, a disappointing season where it seems like, like they're going backwards in terms of their deep rebuild again. They didn't make any progress from last season. Oh no, this team definitely made progress. And a lot of that has to, to happen right when they finally get a chance to, to play in front of, of the fans at bc plays and just went on that incredible bull run at one point going 10 games unbeaten and even then you know there was also a time when they decided to fire, fire mark dos santos and i understand that you know mark dos santos didn't really do do a good job with this team but at the time of his firing i thought he, he it was they were on a really good good run and it was kind of odd that they decided to fire at that time of the period and then of course Vanny Sartini stepped in and there's no doubt that he is start to make his case that you know if he wasn't the interim head coach but if he was the main head coach of this team there could be a case that he could be the the coach of the year the, the amazing job that he's done with this team and really get this team to punch above the weight that they they're supposed to be is just absolutely amazing and like I said this Whitecaps team nobody thought that this team was going to make make it to the playoffs this season after all the adversity that they have to face and they made it to the playoffs at the end it, it just show, shows the resilience and the, the indictment that that you know this team could definitely make some noises once they head into the playoffs but now at number five now i know there's still a lot of people talk about how you know rsl kind of got lucky the fact that they made it to the playoffs because of that call that we remember in that game between Sporting KC and RSL where Sporting KC should have got a penalty and if SKC got that penalty and scored that penalty they probably would have won that that game and RSL would would have been out of the playoffs but regardless of that controversial call 
on decision day. You got to give a lot, lot of cre credit to RSL and especially for for what Pablo Mastroni has done to this team. Where you know this is a a, a team that you know just like the Whitecaps have been facing a lot, lot of adversity this year with the way that you know they don't have an have an owner in their team and basically the team is kind of controlled by the league and also most of the players that they had there was a lot of big question mark of, of how are they going to to do and a lot of people kind of wrote them off thinking that they're probably going to finish dead last in the western conference but that's just not been the case i mean this team team while there's been times that they had had struggles and there's been been time that looked like they're they're out of it this team have also showed the resiliency of able to get big wins i mentioned of the fact that they lead the league in terms of the most goals scored in the 80, 80 minutes or later and when you you lead the league in terms of that stat you know you're a resilient team and you know that this is this is a team that don't quit quit at all and you know that there's no no doubt that 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 is one of the big reason why this team of course made it to the playoff albeit like i said in a very controversial way in that game game against sporting kc even though Though, though, you know, again, if the call was correct, probably they wouldn't be in the playoffs. But at the end of the day, uh, they they can't really control that. And that at the end of the day, they're in the playoffs. And I know a lot of people will once again write this team out of the playoffs because they have to play against the Seattle Sounders. But for me, I'm not going to write them off just yet. I, I want to see what kind of chaos that they're going to the, the bring to the table and what kind of of madness that they can bring because imagine if they can upset the seattle sounders i mean we've seen it before with this rsl team remember back in 2018 where they faced against lafc and everybody wrote off rsl thinking that there's no way they're gonna beat beat lafc that season oh guess what happened uh they beat lafc on the road so i am not writing off any 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 impossible possible Ability that could be happen with RSL going to Seattle and able to beat the the Sounders and finally snapping their 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 streak of of 13 consecutive home home playoff wins at home. But again, you know, you know, we'll see how that's go going to turn out. Now, in terms of the honorable mention, um, honorable mention of course has to go to DC United, uh, the New York Red Bulls, and uh, of course, um, let's see who else, uh, Montreal, of course, that's. The other team that I want to give honorable mention, uh, of course, you know these three teams. Of course, only one of them them did, of course, made made it to the playoffs. Out of all three of these teams, and as you can also tell, all three of these teams are in the Eastern Conference. I try to find a team that I would also give an honorable mention in the West, but in my in many ways, I couldn't really find it. I mean, most of the teams that finished in the standings were kind of expected to 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 do so, and wasn't really that surprising. So in the end, I kind of just gone with all three teams in the Eastern Conference, as my honorable mention. DC, of course, came so close to, to make it to the playoffs. They really tried their best on decision day to make it to the playoffs, but unfortunately, the Red Bulls kind of got in in the way of that. And you know, I think the the surprising thing about DC this season is that nobody thought that Hern Lasada in his fir first season to turn around the mess that this team what was left last year can really turn around this team and be a team that just miss out on the playoffs and very, very final day and the same with the red bulls i mean they were dead and buried, buried back in september like nobody would have got gave the red bulls a chance to to, to come back from like like almost a double digit de deficit as we head into the final two months of the season but that incredible run kept their 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 playoffs hope alive and ultimately getting to the playoffs on the final day and and continue that streak and then of course cf montreal you know their story as i uh, i mentioned before is kind of similar to rsl and also vancouver where this is also a team team that has a bunch of players that you probably don't think would 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 fit well to be a team and also a head coach that have no prior experience in mls and will for nancy and look what he has done to that team and unfortunately again just missing out of the playoffs on the final day with that loss against Orlando. But now we'll get to talk about the disappointing team of this season in MLS. And at number one, well, you know this one is coming. And that, of course, is LAFC. And I'm going to just kind of keep it short with LAFC, where it's pretty obvious why they're, they're, they're one of the most disappointing, if not the most disappointing team this season in MLS. Because the, the amount of talent that they ha have on the field, the f fact that people were saying that this is supposed to be an MLS Cup contender, and they just... Never figure it out. Now, a lot of that has to do with injuries and that, you know, not having Carlos Vela definitely hurt. Not having 
Diego Rossi fully fit and kind of himself for the entire season hurt and also selling him off in the middle of the season kind kind of hurt that too but they also had some injuries in terms of, of the midfield uh you know the back line was was not a, as good as it is as we've seen in well the back line has always been an issue but this season was definitely an ish, issue for this team and I really think that you know the the back line was all was started become an issue when Eddie Segura did did came out of this team like that injury really really ru- ruined the 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 back line this team because Eddie, Eddie Segura was such a, a, a rock in that LAFC back line and ever since he got injured this team just never looked looked the same uh then as we ne- or moving on into number two I don't know why I say then there that was a w- very awkward transition there but we got Toronto FC as the the second team that is Consider one of the most disappointing team this season in MLS, and again, the same goes with LAFC, where this is a team that spent big mon- money in the off season and also spent some big money in the middle of the se- season. Uh, and when you look at how much money that they spend this year and how much talent that this team has, you would think that this team should at least be in the playoffs. But again, injuries kind of took a toll of this team. I mentioned in the in the preseason where, as much as they are spending a lot of money getting the likes of of Pozuelo, well, they actually I didn't say, actually I forgot first they got Pozuelo from last season, but they also spent some good money in bringing guys like Sotelo into this team, and as much money as they spent on, on some of the these guys, when you basically don't don't really care about depth, which it seems like this TFC front office didn't think about that, yeah, you're in deep trouble, and it's unsurprised that once this team was 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 injured to hell and they had to rely on deaf pieces that really isn't ready to 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 step up for this team it's no surprise that this team looked like a sh- shell of them o- old self and eventually once they do get some of those players back in injury those players that came back on the ir just never really look looked the same and that's why wh- you got got to a point where this was a team that is considered one of the most disappointing team in mls uh but now at number three uh, that of course is going to be Columbus, and you know Columbus. I'll pretty much just copy and paste what I said about TFC, where they're they're also a team that dealt with just so much injury this season. I mean, it, it almost felt felt like for Columbus after all the all the talks about how how you know this is such a such an impressive team with a lot of depth. It seems like the MLS gods decided to kind of try to test that to see whether or not indeed they are very deep, and I feel like. The, after this season, we kind of find the answer that no, it seems like they're not as deep as we once first fought. And once those injuries just keep coming, this team never really recover. But you know, injuries isn't the only thing that kind of derailed this season. Another thing that derailed this season is that the back line was just absolutely horrendous this year. Like just so many goals this season they gave up that was just kind of some of the most boneheaded play I've, I've, I've see, seen. And and uh, a back line that that basically was one of the reason why they. The one them done the MLS Cup last season, and it, it's just it was an, a huge shocker to see how how much that back line regress and how much all those pull, and that back line just really looked like like a shell of the, the the MLS Cup winner that they were last season. Now at number four, and that of course is going to be FC Cincinnati, and you know it feels like unless if this team gets better and get get to a point where they don't win the wooden spoon at the end of the season you have to put fc cincinnati as the most disappointing team in mls and again this is a team that they thought that they finally got it right this off season signing some some big big name player and hope to finally they ride the ship and then yeah most of those signings pretty much turned out to be a bust like the only signing that i think cincinnati made last off season that ter- turns out to be a decent one is lucho acosta who really, really look at times looked like the 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 form that he the 2018 form that he he was with DC United but other than that all the other players that they had including one of the most expensive signings that they made last off season and Brenner definitely did not work work out whatsoever I mean Brenner did score scores he did end up be the leading goal scorer I think he scored like nine goals that season but when you pay, are paid 15 million do- dollar to come to MLS to score score goals you should at least be competing for the golden boot race and the fact that he never really got 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 going or at least he was kind of a little bit inconsistent at time I mean, there's times where he he looks good and then there's just time that he looks 
just absolutely terrible. Yeah, I mean, this is just been another disappointing year for FC Cincinnati and again now they're they're probably going to blow it up again and hope that you know fourth time is probably the chart now that fourth time is going to be the one that they finally get it right and build a team that is not a wooden spoon team and just kind of the laughing stock of MLS but now at number five and that of course is the Chicago Fire and speaking of a team that made some signings this offseason that turns out to be a huge bust that's what the Chicago Fire is. Like most of the signings they made this this all off, off season turns out to be bust. And then the signings that they did make made in the previous season that that was kind of a bust in the first year turns out to be the bust again in the second year. And not to mention there's also some good players on this team last season that was decent, but this season they definitely regressed. Guys like Robert Barrett really regressed this season. Just never got his great goal scoring form going like he did did last last year and i think i i believe he's actually now no longer with with the chicago fire with them now seems like after they announced the end of the season roster right after the day when decision day is over it seemed like they're blowing up up again and that again they're they look like it's going to go through a rebuilding period again and it's such a frustrating thing if you're a fire fan because you had some hope that with a new ownership and with them kind of cha- changing their 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 identity and now now getting a chance to go back to their original home in soldier field it looks like it's a new era for the chicago fire nope instead it seems like it was the old frustration for these last two years of being kind of a a bottom feeder and a team that that just that just looked like been stuck in that that stage for the past couple of years and again it just feels like it's it's going to take a while before before they might have another shot in terms of maybe finally building a decent team and maybe make making being a, a playoff contention as they thought that this year was supposed to be one but after that uh in terms of some of the honorable mention uh some of the honorable mention of course is no doubt my team the san jose earthquakes uh inter miami and then of course the la galaxy again you know for the quakes it's an honorable mention i could have easily put them at number five but you know, at the end of the day, I, I feel like, you know, it's, is it really a disappointing season for the Quakes when you expected that you knew that they're probably going to regress? Like I I said it before, I've seen this so many times where t- this team make it to the playoffs in one year and had a decent year and give you all some hope. And one of the things that you never want to do if you're a Quakes fan is to have hope on the team because you know that hope is going to eventually be crushed. And this season was that case where, yeah, again, they're back to, to be in a team that I wouldn't say it was the worst team in the league like what we had in back in 2018 where remember when they, we made the playoffs in 2017 and there was a lot of hope things were going to go well and then the next season they turned out to be the worst team in the league and while it wasn't that uh this season it was still a frustrating year where they just again never got 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 it going and never really really ki- kind of make a run to potentially get themselves into playoff contention and then, of course, you got Inter Miami. Again, I don't really need a lot of explanation of the fact that when you have, have spent so much money on your, your squad and have a lot of expectation on your hand and you don't meet those expectations, yeah, there, there's no su- su- surprise that Inter Miami lands on, on that list. And then finally, the LA Galaxy, which this is a bit of a controversial one because I don't think this season, again, it's a disappointing year for the Galaxy in a way that, you know, we knew this year it was a transitional year and knowing the fact that, you know, you know them, them uh, going through a new head coach and Greg Venny and them still him trying to 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 get the team that that he like. It's gonna take a couple of years before this team team will get get going. But I think maybe the disappointment factor is the fact that this team literally were above the red line for the entire season except for stoppage time time of decision day. Like that was actually turns out to be the only time when they're below the red line and anytime when you have that kind of feeling i mean it's almost like that's kind of like a feeling where you're you basically are up three two in a game and then you basically lost four three in in the last minute because your defense just completely collapsed which that kind of explains the galaxy in in that decision a game where their defense decided to to go back to the usual galaxy defense form which is letting goals left and right and even though that they're high in talent on the attack try to bail them out they weren't able to to do so and again albeit yes it they kind of got knocked out very controversially because of that skc game between rsl i think a lot of galaxy fans that from what what i heard haven't really been been that 
that kind kind of partially point out that that's the reason why they missed the playoffs and the real reason they missed the playoffs was because of the fact that they just look absolutely horrendous in the second half of the season and just kind of imploded in the second half of the season with them going through a really bad stretch to finish the season but yeah there you have it that is pretty much it of looking at the five most surprising and disappointing team this season in the mls regular season let me know in the comments below what do you think of this list have i got some of these teams uh, on this list wrong or if there's any team that you think should be on this list let me know in the comments below but until then hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys do like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time